guys, welcome to part six of Craftober. This is it, this is the final chapter, you guys. Um, I'm sad, but I'm also super happy and excited because I've never done anything like this and it was so much fun. I learned a lot and I'm blown away by how many like likes and subscribers and comments and like people sending me things on Instagram there were and it was so amazing to see what people made and just, it was, I had a lot of fun. Hopefully you had fun too. Uh, so today we're gonna do the interior of the witch greenhouse and that is the final thing that we're making for this month. However, next month, um, the comments have spoken and I'm going to do a video on scale. So be on the lookout for that. If you're new here, you're coming in at the end, but this is Cracktober Extravaganza where I crafted something every single day and then every, <coughs> every four or five days or so, <laughs> I came out with a video for you guys on what I did and showed you some tips and tricks on how you could do it too. So if you uh, like this kind of a thing, you can subscribe and it'll notify you when the next videos come out. Oh, Alba. Okay guys, I have to explain. <laughs> What's going on with you right now? You can't reach my hand to bite it. Okay, so Baba has not been in any kind of accident or anything, but he does have a cone on his head because we couldn't afford to have any uh, All Ball Juniors running around the place. So we had take it to take him to the vet to get snipped. Point is, All Ball's still here trying to bite my hand. That's the main point of the story. You can't stop this guy, can't hold him down. I think that's everything. I'm so happy, so excited. Let's get into the video. Oh, thanks for watching. I love you. Bye bye. <laughs> hey. So once again, just like in the previous video, we're starting with the sketch so we have an idea what our finished product is going to look like. This is going to be a tiny apothecary's bookcase and I have planned out what size I need it to be to be in 1 24th scale. So now I'm going back and cutting out all of the pieces according to those measurements. So once I've gathered all of my pieces, then I start gluing them together. This is going to be a glass panel inside of the bookcase, and it's using the same techniques from the previous Craftover episode. Sometimes I don't get the glue right. <laughs> I'm using Sculpey Firm this time as the base for the UV resin. The firm doesn't melt and stick to the back of the glass as much as the green one I used last time. This time my coffee break is brought to you guys by myself because my boyfriend was busy cooking food all day. Speaking of coffee, this is how you make a stain for wood. First you make a mess. Then you get Oops. your Folgers instant coffee and mix it with some vinegar and it turns into a really nice wood stain. I would say use a brush that you don't really care about for this, although it hasn't really been damaging to my paintbrushes. I attempted to do a darker stain by mixing in some India ink, and I got two options, but then I thought, okay, I'll leave it this lighter version, which later, you, as you can see, um, <laughs> I end up changing and making it completely a different shade. So you can always go back and make it darker. Also, the wood warped, and this was my solution for fixing that. Remember how I said he was cooking all day? He brought me dinner, guys. <laughs> he brought me dinner. Oops, I was almost eating it. This is the way to my heart. Okay, so let's see how it looks without gluing it together. Looks pretty good. Now I am adding in the drawers for this bookcase. I didn't want to have every single drawer open, so I just made a false front that has flat and shows the drawers and then made tiny little drawers to stick inside that actually do open. Hey, let's hey take an all ball break. You're supposed to be resting. Do you see this? 
We're venturing outside into the great corona-filled world because I needed something to make tons of tiny plants for this place. I didn't want to sit and cut out a million leaves again. So this is what happened when I came back. Obviously all ball got to my desk. Here he is again. This time I'm dry brushing with a sponge. Uh, it just gives a different effect than the brush, but I don't know which I like better. And then I use some gold paint mixed with UV resin to make the little knobs for the drawers. Okay, time to add plants. First we need pots. <laughs> so I grabbed this ceramic tile, which is great for working on because I can stick this directly in the oven. And then I made tons of tiny little stacked up potted plant holders and pots for the plants. And my goal here was to just make it look like there were millions inside of this tiny little greenhouse without me having to actually make millions of pots everything into the oven at 275 for 15 minutes. In the end, I still ended up cutting out tons of leaves, guys. I can't get away from it. Remember those uh, plants that we got at the 99 cent store? This is great. I painted them and then I cut off the tips and stuck them in the little pots and they make great tiny plants that look realistic enough for our purposes without me having to keep cutting out those. And they can also be used for flowers. To make the tiny witch's broom, I cut up a really, really, really cheap paintbrush that I got from Home Depot and then hot glued it onto a toothpick. I scrunched up the ends to make it look used and worn. Now I'm gluing everything into place. These tiny images I got off the internet. There are a lot of libraries that have catalogs of like 18th century botanical illustrations that are copyright free and that you can download and use for whatever you want. So that is where I picked these up and it's a really good resource for you guys if you're looking for images like this. So once I was done with the greenery side of the greenhouse, I went over to the bookcase and started putting together all of the little knickknacks that our tiny witch has in her possession. I made this all about her books, like her magic spell books and her recipes for love potions and all of her illustrations on the species of plants that she has growing in her greenhouse. And then I just pasted all of those into the bookcase. And last but not least, I sprinkled everything with some of that flocking that we used for the grass in our cemetery diorama, just to make it look like there was some kind of magical green growth all over the inside of this greenhouse. Here's a close up. <laughs> this
Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.